It all began with this, Henry Ford's Model T. With mass production, it multiplied fast. In less than 20 years, more than 15 million. And in half a century, more than 100 million. For many people, cars became more than just a means of transport. They became a way of life. What do they think, these children of the motor age? Cars have fascinated me ever since I was about five. And I remember we used to pretend that um, it could fly and it had all kinds of things like that. You have to, you've had a car for a few, a few years or so, you tend to think it's part of the family. I've always remembered um, Aviva looked like our headmistress at school. <laughs> cars don't get to look like people, people get to look like cars. We were going on this coach trip and we got in a traffic jam and everyone quickly got out of their cars because everything was turned into jam. Well, my car would be like this. You would take one of the, ga the flying gadgets, go off and do that. Or else you could just walk over it. Of course, they can come in all sizes. But it could have extra length and height. So I'm doing a bubble car. I'm doing a real bubble car. You burst it and it goes... <laughs> The idea of this van is really to enable a family to drive on a main road and to get into a smaller van and to drive into a town. The pickup wire clips under the edge of it, so enabling the car to pick up its power supply. This is an all-purpose car. It has quite a few gadgets, about ten gadgets altogether. On the top is the rotor blade, which is for getting over traffic jams. What happens if it rains? You get wet. Well, why not put that there, an umbrella? You can detach it for use for yourself. What happens if it's very icy or snowy on the road? Oh, well, the skin can take care of that. And the fog piercer freezes all the fog and makes it solid. It falls to the floor and the plough pushes it away. At the back, there's an emergency brake which is a sort of parachute which opens from the inside of the machine and brakes, pulling the car to a standstill. The atomic car runs on two wheels when going at top speed, which is about 300 miles an hour. Right now, I'm drawing the atomic reactor, which is on top of the lead fin. Wouldn't it be great to see it come to life and walk on its own, like this? It walks up these walls here by suction pads on these legs. After coming down by suction pad, they change automatically to wheels, which is still the fastest way of going over smooth terrain. But when it comes to rough ground, it can use its legs. The legs come down by hydraulics and the legs will bridge any crevasse by shooting down. And of course it can swim. Yes, but I prefer the propellers or the hover jets.
Thank you. 